The recent debate between Governor Tim Walz and Senator J.D. Vance served as a significant platform for discussing several critical and interrelated issues plaguing the United States, particularly the opioid crisis, immigration policy, and the escalating housing shortage. This multifaceted dialogue began with a focus on opioid fatalities, a topic of grave national concern that has touched countless families and communities. Governor Walls, representing a Democratic perspective, asserted with conviction that the past year had marked an unprecedented decline in opioid-related deaths across the nation, proudly citing a notable 30% decrease specifically within the state of Ohio. However, this claim did not escape scrutiny. The CBS News fact-checking team evaluated Walls' assertion and ultimately deemed it to be only partially true. The critical nuance in this assessment lies in the fact that the official recording of opioid deaths in the United States began in earnest only in 2015, which creates limitations when considering trends over a longer timeline. By the year 2024, the statistics revealed a sobering reality. The nation faced over 77,000 opioid-related deaths, a figure that, while showing a 7% reduction from the previous year, underscores the ongoing severity of the crisis. In Ohio specifically, although the decrease was acknowledged, the actual figure was closer to 18%, highlighting a significant discrepancy between Walls' assertion and the facts as reported. This discrepancy is not merely a statistical debate. It reflects broader discussions around the effectiveness of public health strategies and the continuing battle against substance abuse that many states face. In his response, Governor Walls recognized that while the reduction in opioid deaths is indeed a step in the right direction, it must not serve as a false sense of security. He emphasized the critical need for sustained efforts to combat the opioid epidemic, indicating that there is much work left to do in this area. Following this, Walls transitioned the conversation towards immigration, showcasing Vice President Kamala Harris's qualifications based on her prior role as the Attorney General of California, a state that has faced significant challenges regarding border control and immigration issues. He framed Harris as a proactive leader who has taken decisive action against transnational gangs involved in heinous crimes, such as human trafficking and drug-related offenses. Walls articulated a vision for a collaborative approach to immigration reform, calling for the engagement of a diverse coalition that includes members of Congress, Border Patrol agents, and representatives from the Chamber of Commerce. He pointed to a specific bipartisan bill aimed at enhancing border security and improving drug detection capabilities, thereby underscoring the necessity of cooperative legislative efforts rather than solely relying on executive actions. In stark contrast to Walls' assertions, Senator Vance presented a critical perspective on Harris's purported role as the border czar. He contended that her policies had not only failed to stem the tide of illegal immigration, but had also facilitated a dramatic increase in the trafficking of dangerous substances like fentanyl. Vance's rhetoric painted Harris as responsible for reversing many of the successful border control measures that had been implemented during the Trump administration. He cited statistics showing unprecedented levels of illegal crossings into the United States, arguing that these policies directly contributed to a worsening public safety situation. Vance framed his critiques within the broader context of family separations, asserting that Harris's approach had led to detrimental outcomes, including the separation of children from their parents, a situation he claimed disproportionately affects vulnerable families, including those with U.S. citizen children. As the discussion evolved, it shifted focus to the pressing issue of housing affordability, an increasingly relevant topic given the rapid rise in home prices across the country. Senator Vance argued emphatically that the influx of millions of undocumented immigrants into the United States has played a significant role in driving up housing costs. The CBS News fact-checking team, while acknowledging some truth in Vance's claim, rated it as only partially accurate. They highlighted that the factors contributing to the housing crisis are multifaceted and complex. Notably, they pointed to a long-standing decline in the rate of new housing stock creation, a trend that has persisted since the Great Recession, complicating the narrative surrounding blame for rising housing prices. Vance continued to press his point, asserting that the current administration's failure to address housing affordability is emblematic of a larger pattern of inaction. He criticized Vice President Harris for not taking advantage of her position to enact policies that could effectively alleviate the housing crisis. Instead, he suggested that she was too focused on campaigning rather than delivering real solutions to the pressing challenges faced by American families. Vance proposed a bold platform that included the seizure of underutilized federal lands to facilitate the construction of new housing, the elimination of regulatory barriers that hinder building efforts, and the introduction of tax incentives to stimulate the housing market. However, despite the ambitious nature of his proposals, Vance faced challenges in articulating how these sweeping plans would translate into immediate relief for struggling families. The complexity of the housing crisis often requires multifaceted, long-term strategies rather than quick-fix solutions. Vance further elaborated on the interconnectedness of energy costs and housing prices, advocating for a robust increase in domestic energy production as a strategy to alleviate financial pressures on American families. He argued passionately that rising energy prices are a significant contributor to overall living expenses, including the costs associated with housing and construction. By proposing a return to more aggressive energy policies, such as increasing drilling for oil and gas, Vance posited that this would create a beneficial ripple effect, reducing costs not only in the housing market, but also across a broad array of consumer goods and services. He emphasized that when transportation costs for materials rise, 
driven by elevated energy prices, the overall costs of construction inevitably increase, compounding the challenges faced by potential homebuyers. The debate between Walls and Vance exemplified the sharp contrast in their approaches to addressing these pressing national issues. Walls focused on the importance of bipartisan collaboration to tackle complex problems, underscoring the need for a united front in addressing the opioid crisis and immigration reform. In contrast, Vance's narrative leaned heavily on criticism of the current administration, calling for accountability and immediate action in the face of what he characterized as systemic failures in leadership. This discourse revealed not only the urgency of addressing the interconnected challenges of drug policy, immigration, and housing affordability, but also the ideological divides that shape contemporary political discourse. While Walls advocated for a comprehensive and cooperative approach to enact change, Vance emphasized the necessity of decisive action against perceived inaction and ineffectiveness. Each candidate's narrative reflected a broader political landscape marked by deep divisions, where the stakes of these discussions are not merely academic, but profoundly impact the lives of countless Americans grappling with these urgent issues. The complexity of the challenges posed by opioid addiction, immigration policy, and housing shortages underscores the necessity for nuanced discussions and concerted efforts to find effective solutions that resonate with the diverse needs of the population. The debate between Governor Tim Walls and Senator J.D. Vance illuminated several critical issues currently facing the United States, particularly the opioid crisis, immigration policy, and the housing shortage. Each candidate's positions not only reflected their party affiliations, but also underscored broader ideological divides that have emerged in contemporary political discourse. The discussion revealed key takeaways that can impact public perception and policy directions in significant ways. One major takeaway from the debate is the contrasting narratives around the opioid crisis. Governor Walls emphasized the positive trend of decreasing opioid deaths, framing it as a triumph of public health initiatives. This optimistic portrayal may resonate with voters who are weary from the devastation brought by addiction. However, the fact-checking by CBS News, which revealed that the decrease was less dramatic than claimed, suggests a potential disconnect between the narrative and the reality on the ground. This discrepancy could lead to skepticism among constituents regarding the effectiveness of current policies. Voters may begin to question whether the progress reported is substantial enough to address the ongoing crisis, particularly as over 77,000 lives were still lost to opioids in 2024. Such skepticism could drive calls for more robust interventions, potentially influencing future legislative initiatives. On the immigration front, the debate highlighted a fundamental divide in how each candidate perceives the impact of immigration on national security and public welfare. Vance's critical stance on Vice President Harris's role in immigration policy is emblematic of a larger narrative among conservatives, who argue that lax border policies lead to increased crime and social disruption. His assertion that Harris's policies have enabled drug cartels and facilitated family separations paints a stark picture that may resonate with voters concerned about border security and public safety. If such sentiments gain traction, they could lead to a demand for stricter immigration measures, further polarizing the already contentious discourse surrounding this issue. Conversely, Walls' defense of Harris and his call for bipartisan cooperation reflect a more optimistic view of immigration as an opportunity rather than a threat. His emphasis on collaborative efforts among various stakeholders may appeal to those who see immigration as integral to America's fabric. However, the effectiveness of this approach is challenged by the realities on the ground, where rising illegal crossings and concerns about drug trafficking have fueled public anxiety. The tension between these perspectives underscores the complexity of immigration reform and the difficulty of crafting policies that satisfy the concerns of both sides. As a consequence, public sentiment may remain divided, making it challenging for lawmakers to forge effective, widely accepted solutions. The discussion on housing affordability also revealed significant insights. Vance's argument that an influx of undocumented immigrants drives up housing prices resonates with a segment of the population that feels squeezed by rising costs and stagnant wages. His proposals for seizing federal lands and reducing regulations may appear attractive to those frustrated by the high cost of living, especially in urban areas where housing shortages are most acute. However, this position risks oversimplifying a complex issue. While immigration does play a role in the housing market, the housing shortage is primarily a long-standing issue that predates recent immigration trends. A more nuanced understanding of this complexity may lead voters to demand comprehensive reforms that address both supply and demand factors in the housing market. On the other hand, Walls' focus on collaboration and legislation to improve housing affordability reflects a recognition of the multifaceted nature of the crisis. His approach suggests that effective solutions will require contributions from various sectors and levels of government. However, as Vance pointed out, there is a sense of urgency among Americans who feel that current leadership is failing to deliver tangible results. This sentiment could foster a climate of frustration and impatience, leading to increased support for candidates who promise more aggressive action, regardless of the feasibility of such promises. Sentiment analysis from the debate reveals a complex emotional landscape among the electorate. Many Americans are likely feeling a mixture of hope and frustration. While there are glimmers of progress in areas like opioid reduction, the ongoing challenges, whether in drug addiction, immigration enforcement, or housing shortages, 
continue to weigh heavily on public sentiment. The debate showcased a clear divide between those who are optimistic about collaborative approaches and those who feel that urgent action is needed to rectify perceived failures of the current administration. Moreover, the emotional tone of the debate also reflected broader societal anxieties. Concerns over public safety, economic stability, and quality of life were palpable. As voters grapple with the tangible effects of these issues in their daily lives, the narratives put forth by candidates can shape their views and drive electoral decisions. Candidates who can effectively connect with voters' emotions, acknowledging their fears while also presenting hopeful and actionable solutions, may find themselves resonating more deeply with the electorate. In conclusion, the debate between Walls and Vance not only highlighted critical issues, but also underscored the profound implications these discussions have for American society. The contrasting narratives surrounding the opioid crisis, immigration policy, and housing affordability reveal deep ideological divides that are likely to shape the political landscape moving forward. Voters are increasingly aware of the complexities inherent in these challenges, and their sentiment, marked by both hope and frustration, will play a crucial role in influencing policy directions. As the electorate continues to navigate these pressing concerns, the effectiveness of candidates in articulating their visions and connecting with public sentiment will be pivotal in shaping the future of American governance. Ultimately, the outcomes of these discussions will extend beyond the debate stage, potentially impacting legislative action and the everyday lives of countless Americans.